Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our new edition of Big Brother 23 Live Feed Spoilers. We are a little over 24 hours away from what is probably going to be the Christian eviction party on social media and or maybe with a few people in the house. Yeah, at the moment, it looks like Christian still going. We'll we'll take it through some of what's going on because I think this is a very... This is a very interesting week because, you know, lo and behold, we, it doesn't seem like we're going to have, like, any surprise last-minute switches, but it does feel like there is a lot of conflict starting to boil over, especially within the cookout itself, over how do you handle the campaigning? What do you say to someone who is like, please, you know, give me a vote, support me, make me feel like I have a chance? Yeah, I think it it is very difficult to be able to still play your own game while you're in an alliance. It's inevitable. There's going to be conflict. I think we all sort of have to prepare for that. And I think anyone, like anytime we have a huge dominant alliance in this game, it's like very rarely is that entire group all going to make it to the end. Like even with the brigade, they got rid of Matt a little bit yeah. earlier on. Like this, there's still going to be a lot of conflict happening there. But let's begin with Christian, who, you know, we've said it before, I will never give Christian grief for trying. I will never give anyone grief for trying. As <laughs> I said, even Brent, who I was not a fan of, but he really tried. And Christian is also continuing to push really hard. And, you know, it's just the issue is that people want to honor Derek X's noms and, you know, they may not get another chance to do so. Yeah, it, it's this is just one of those sort of situations where I think this dude, he's just such a he. It's not it's not an insult to him. He's just such a beast. Like <laughs> he's so physical, and he's not like physical in the way where you think, oh, he's only going to be good at strength competitions. He's just like he's athletic. He's fast. He's he he can win a lot of stuff, and it's sort of like you don't want a month from now to see Christian on like a five comp winning spree being like, why did we not take advantage when we had the opportunity to take advantage? Yeah. And it's interesting too, because Christian is seemingly blaming Sarah Beth and Kylan as a duo <laughs> as for setting, setting them up as targets. Yeah. He's just really, this is the, this is all of this is kind of bizarre in the way in which he's going about all this. He's not, he's not blaming Derek X enough. Who's really the person responsible for his demise. Yeah, which is kind of amazing <laughs> for Derek X. I think his game is really underestimated. He's won a lot of competitions. Yeah. Uh, like I said, he was so targeted that first week and he really managed to turn it around. He has put up Christian as a back door yeah. and Christian is not really looking in Derek X's direction anymore. Yeah, like Christian's offering him a three-week deal. I, it, it, the funniest thing, I always love it when people go and try to really campaign hard to the HOH when it's just sort of like, you know, I know people want to honor Derek X's nominations, don't get me wrong, but Derek X is not voting in the same way that the other people. Why are you, why are you wasting your time giving Derek X a three-week deal? Listen, I, I kind of understand. I understand, yes, Derek X does not have any vote this week. Yeah. However, people, if people are telling Christian, we want to, you know, honor Derek X's nominations, then you need to go to Derek X and be like, Derek man listen i'll offer you anything i will offer you a three-week deal i will offer you my firstborn i will give up <laughs> Alyssa. you can have her you can have anything you want because if people are saying we want to honor derek x then derek x allegedly has that kind of power yeah. to then go around and be like hey everybody you want to honor my noms cool i've changed my mind it's sarah beth please everybody vote that way I, I, I'm still laughing in my head about the, I will give up Alyssa. Alyssa's off somewhere being like, wait just a gosh darn minute right. here. But the, uh, yeah, I, you know, good, good on him for trying. I'm not, I'm not upset at Christian whatsoever. He's doing what he needs to do. Alyssa's pushing very hard for him as well, though. Yep. I don't know. I, I, I think back a lot to, you know, when Brendan was eliminated at Big Brother 13, like that, that helped Rachel a lot. I, I think Christian going is probably actually not bad for Alyssa long term here. Yeah, I I think it would be better for her if there wasn't, of course, a giant alliance steamrolling the house. That yeah. was happening a little bit less 
when that happened with Brendan. It's true. It's true. So the the last thing before we get to the you know the major cookout concerns here, because there's a lot of just interesting stuff going on there, is. You know, Brittany seems to be one of the people with the most reservations out of, like, the people who are probably voting for Christian to go. And I think a lot of it stems from she's worried that if Sarah Beth stays, that Sarah Beth is going to come after her, that she's going to be a target. And I'm just thinking, is it just because you won the veto over Sarah Beth? It's, Brittany, is, Brittany is entertaining, but I think Brittany sometimes makes the target in her head, like, five times bigger than it actually is in reality. Which is something that a lot of people in this game do. There's nothing here to do except think yourself to death. So sometimes you do get stuff stuck in your head where it's not really true or not entirely true or not true at all. <laughs> I, and and it grows into something bigger. I will, I will say that when I was on Beauty and the Geek and at the end of every episode, you have people that are voted into the elimination room. I will sympathize with Brittany. I always thought I was going into the elimination room, sometimes for very stupid reasons. After I broke my clavicle on the show, I thought they were going to send me in because I thought they thought they thought that people would feel sorry for me and that that would help me in the game. So they would be like, let's just get rid of the guy with the broken bone now. I absolutely would have put you up for uh, that okay. because I do not want to sit up against the guy with the broken clavicle. Ruthless. Hey, you know, it's a game. You got to do what you got to do. I wouldn't have blamed you. I feel like that's a legitimate worry. It is legit. Okay, see, that, that that is the thing. You can come up with either legitimate or completely irrational worries, depending yeah. on however you want to approach the game. Yes. All right. Well, let's, let's get into the cookout stuff, because this is the stuff that I think is the most intriguing, because it is <laughs> sort of like, how do you keep an alliance together of a lot of people with very different thoughts on the game, especially when you're doing some of the following stuff. Yeah. Hannah talks with Xavier and basically makes it clear to Xavier that some other people, Kyle and Tiffany, are sort of acting as though he is pushing for Christian to stay more. And I know Xavier kind of thinks that, you know, Christian's a big shield. Christian, yeah. somebody you can sort of hide behind. But if you're Xavier, you can't really like people out there making assumptions as to what you want to do or not do. Yeah, it's... It's a very weird thing to be sort of, it's not the right time to be kind of bringing these things up in your own alliance. Like right now you guys are good. There yeah. is no real, you need to worry about, is this person saying this or that or whatever? Like you can bring it to Xavier and be like, listen, Christian is going, make sure you don't push for him because I just don't want any anyone in you don't have to start naming people you mean yeah. like anyone in our alliance to think that you're sort of going against Derek X or going against the whole group like we all are just like they all just need to get together and yeah. have the conversation as one group and I know that that's difficult yeah in a house like this but there are ways to make that stuff happen I think one of the problems to me is that Tiffany and Tiffany's an incredible strategic player. Like she yep. thinks everything through. We have poured on the praise for Tiffany all season. Yeah. She just doesn't have an off switch. And I kind of feel like in Big Brother or Survivor or any reality show or even even if in just in life, like let's say, you know, we are out at a coffee shop somewhere. And all I want to talk about are robots. I don't know why I'm talking about them, but you're probably eventually going to be like, can you talk about something other than robots for a while, please? Yes, absolutely. It's totally true. We have a friend who just talks about reality TV a lot and we love reality yes. TV and we want to talk about reality TV, but sometimes we just want to know how he's doing. <laughs> that is kind of what's going on with Tiffany, where Tiffany just wants to talk game or wants to figure out things with game or wants to talk about about how other people should talk about game to the point where everybody is just like Tiffany you're not on the block nobody nobody even in the cookout is on the block right now there's no point to just overthink ourselves to death with this stuff but it's big brother so that is what happens and yes with Tiffany she doesn't she doesn't seem to ever really stop playing the game which is you know one of the things that makes her as good of a player as she is because yeah. so far she's been able to do this for like what are we on now we Five or yeah. whatever. And only Derek X has really kind of started to be like, hmm, maybe this is a problem. <laughs> like, people know that she's a good player and that she's playing hard, but I don't think anyone's actually looking at it 
too deeply as a problem at the moment when they should be. Here is where things start to get a little bit messy with Tiffany is last night she is there discussing things with the Jokers and the Jokers here are dear old Jokers. They have been trying to just kind of be on the fence when it comes to Christian. They don't really want to tell him anything. They don't want to make him feel like he's going or anything like that. This is a problem for Tiffany because for Tiffany, then all of a sudden it starts to be like, oh, then, you know, myself and Claire, we're going to kind of look like the swing votes. Then all the pressure is going to be on us. And then she's just basically like with Aza and Derek F and Brittany that, you know, if Christian starts acting like he's got, you know, Brittany's vote, she's going to tell him, oh, you know, you don't have Brittany's vote. Like she's just going to go and freaking expose them for riding the fence. Yeah, it's... It's such a messy spot to be in. <laughs> like, it's, I, I understand Tiffany doesn't want the brunt on her as a swing vote because Alyssa could stay. Alyssa could be mad about any of this sort of stuff. But I think, Tiffany, you can't go to other people and be like, you need to do this, that, and the other. And they're going to be like, yes, please. I will go along and do your bidding every second of the game. Basically, this is all leading to a situation where Aza and Derek feel like Tiffany is just trying to boss them around all the time. When it gets even to the point where Derek F is like telling the camera he wants Sarah Beth to win HOH so that she can go after Tiffany. And I, I don't even know if he means that or if he's just like really annoyed in the moment. Yeah, and it's interesting because, again, it's not really them looking at her as a good game player. Oh, she's really strategic. Oh, she's running things. It's more of a like, I feel like I'm getting bossed around and I'm done with it. So let's just get her out. It it, it, it's an emo it feels like an emotional move. And the, we, we've talked about this, that the Jokers are emotional players. They, they are. They should rename this team the um, Emokers. <laughs> the Emoters. There we go. The hey, Emoters. Hey, that one's good. It took us a minute to get there, guys. Yeah. Sometimes it's a journey. But... It's a journey. It's all right. Yeah. It's the, all right. The Emoters here, you know, I think they, they just want to feel special. But you know what? In the midst of all of this, Tiffany bossing them around may have finally gotten them to realize something that we have been saying in these videos for a while. They need each other, and they really do. The, everyone else thinks that you guys are all jokers. They're not treating you seriously. You're not at the top of their list. Like, no, and you're not at the top of that alliance of the cookout either. Like, you really do need each other. This is what would be so interesting to me is, you know, what if and a lot of us have been critical of Oz and Derek F and at times understandably so. But what if this is sort of the thing that kicks them into high gear? These two actually really start to get something together. And if they like can make it to the end of this game with an alliance that's so obvious and has been there from the very beginning yeah. that production even named it. It's funny they would be jokers because this would be hilarious. <laughs> Listen, at least Aza has stopped trying to put herself on the block. She is my winner's pick, and I, I'm sticking with her. I think that she can turn some of this around. She does play a lot with her heart, yeah. which can really trip you up in this game, but it can also build good connections that can get you further. I still believe in you. Come on. <laughs> Listen, I would. We all still want to believe in her. I, I'm. I'm still trying to believe in Claire, even if Claire's only highlight from the last two days is playing 52 card pickup in a silly costume, and she's not a part of the dominant alliance. Yeah. Like, we all still want to believe. And Aza is smart. I mean, she's definitely. Yeah, she is. She's definitely smart and aware enough to sort of realize that. Oh, you know, Tiffany doesn't treat me in the way in which that I view myself as a yeah. player. Yes, and that's an important thing to really realize when you are working with someone in an alliance because yeah. then, you know, you start to kind of figure out where you are in a big alliance. And if you're kind of feeling like, okay, Tiffany is saying some stuff or treating me a certain way yeah. and treating Derek F a certain way, okay, well, it's the two of us. We're being treated a certain way. Then maybe we're not high up enough in this alliance. Yeah. Maybe it is time to start thinking about working with the other side of the house or making a different move or trying to find a way to raise ourselves up by getting Tiffany out. Derek F, you have an opportunity here to be promoted <laughs> to Derek who gives an F as opposed to Derek who gives no Fs. This is yeah. your time to shine. This is your time. All right, we'll wrap everything up here. But uh, 
Do you think Christian has any opportunities left? Is there any moves that this guy can make? Do you guys think the cookout is really on the verge of crumbling? Let, let us know. And if you guys do enjoy this video, hit that subscribe button, that like button. Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you here next time.